WBTC Radio Detroit. You can find us on Facebook, YouTube, X, and our website, www.wvtcdetroit.com, or download our WBTC app from the Play Store for Android users and the App Store for iPhone users. WVTCDetroit.com to the Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose. You will hear the finest in gospel music, insightful conversation, and guests that will enhance you. The Sandy Rose Show can be heard every Monday and Tuesday from 5 to 7 p.m. Eastern and 2 p.m. Pacific, live on YouTube. So get your pencil, paper, and shouting shoes and get ready for today's broadcast. So listen, (laughs) text a friend or tag a friend and tell them to listen to. for the creation of this vast universe. You reach down with your omnipotent hand into the great abyss of nothingness and threw nothing out into nowhere and nothing became something. What a world we live in. Look at this world. It's gigantic and it's grand Mountain heights with scintillating views, valleys scooped out by eternal hands, rolling prairies, running brooks, rippling streams blessed with gold, silver, diamonds, and all kinds of precious minerals. My soul sings when I look and see how God splashed a multitude of stars kissing the heavens like diamonds sprinkled against black velvet and hanging like trapezes from the roof of God's gymnasium. You place the moon and announce for the world to hear, this is the queen of the night and she has never stopped shining. The oceans whose depths have to be measured in miles. The sun has never run out of gas. The stars keep coming out to play. The seasons still march in splendid succession. My God is real. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He even looked around one day to see what he had created and said, that's good. And one day, when he brings everything to consummation and a glorious fruition, when he comes with a shout of acclamation to take me home, 
what joy shall fill my heart when he calls me I will answer and I will bow in humble adoration and my soul will say how great how great thou art for I know I have a house of many mansions eternal in the heavens up where Jesus lives up beyond the atmosphere the stratosphere the exosphere the troposphere up where I'll never grow old up to the streets of gold up beyond the vicissitudes of life and I will honor him as King of Kings and Lord of Lords and simply say to him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God dominion and power both now and forever and forever and forever my God how great thou art
Yes, it was because of the blood. It was the blood. I am born again, free from sin. And Mm -hmm. why? It's because of the blood. And I know that you all enjoyed that song. Uh, Amen. 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 That's my girl. All right. All right. And I'm representing today. All right. Yes. (laughs) I've got my shirt on today. So I am representing uh, the Crutchfield camp. Amen. Amen. Cause it's because of the blood and it's because of the blood. We are all here today and we want to welcome everybody to today's installment of the Sandy Rose show. And I am Sandy Rose and you are. I'm Pastor Jack. Good evening, everybody. And glad to be on the, in the number <laughs> on today. <laughs> I am Teresa Acton. Um, and it's good to see everyone. And my name is Richard Daryl Nichols, <laughs> all the way from Chino, you know, Chino, California. 
All right. As my grandmother would say, make it plain, son. Make it plain. <laughs> yes. Make it plain. All right. And we are so happy to be here. And we know that uh, uh, Renee and Paul Parker, Minister Paul Parker, will be doing something uh, later on in the year. I think it's in April, maybe. May. Mother's May, Day weekend. Mother's Day. Mother's Day weekend. So we will be announcing that as it comes closer. But she's on her way. I think her and uh, Nene. Nene. <laughs> All right. They're going to go out there and they're going to show, show the West Coast something. Take the Midwest out to the West Coast. Amen. You know she's going to be in my car, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Well, we are just so happy. We, are, we love it when a good connection comes together. And we Amen. know that uh, the Los Angeles area will enjoy thoroughly, mm -hmm. thoroughly be blessed by the ministry of Renee Crutchfield and her daughter, lovely Nene. So um, we are happy to be here today. Uh, we had a wonderful weekend. We can do, let's do the weather real quick. Um, and for those who put it in the chat, we want to say hi to Paulette Rose uh, all the way there in Mickey country. She's got 77 degrees today, 77. Roosevelt right. is in Chicago and it is 44. Wow. In the windy city, oh, they lost God. about thirty degrees. They <laughs> lost about thirty degrees since yesterday. <laughs> since yesterday, let's see. We've got Roxy. She's in Phoenix, and <coughs> Phoenix is seventy-seven. So she's about the same. About the same. Let's see. Teresa. Uh, Teresa has sixty-five and a little cloudy in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, we have a uh, Hallie who is right here in Detroit, and she's got a cloudy 57 degrees, and shall I say, we's got. Uh, not it's been raining off and on today, and the temperature was at, at, like, like at about 59, but the rain has made it drop some. Yeah, yeah. Are and you still wearing what your were we, like 80, close to 80 degrees? Wow. Yeah. Are you still wearing your furs out there in Detroit? Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying. I had no. I was gonna say, did I have one? No, I didn't have one on Sunday. You didn't have none because Sunday Sunday was hot. Yeah, <laughs> I had one on last Sunday. Right. Okay. Right. right. Yeah. All right. Now we won't be putting it in storage till. Yeah, now. it won't be long. <laughs> it'll be it'll be Mother's Day. If we put it in storage. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, that's when, it's when the weather's old. doing like it's doing. That back and forth. It's 70, it's 30, it's 50, it's 40. It, I mean, we've been really doing some extremes this winter. So that, that usually makes winter last a little longer. Mm. But uh, Oh, listen, we're going to bind that demon up. <laughs> all right. Uh, we've got <laughs> Dr. I'm Catherine. Just, I'm just saying all the years <laughs> I've been here in the lab, that's what I've noticed when it's fluctuating a lot. It lasts long. When it go home and get cold, stay cold, boom, then when it comes and goes. But when it 70, 70, come on, in February. <laughs> yeah, we we've got it. 65 for Catherine, Dr. Catherine, that's in Los Angeles. We've got Brenda Rubin. She's all the way from the Bay Area, and she's got 57, cloudy, cold, like and more rain on the way. Listen, I pray for you on a regular basis. <laughs> just, just, you know, because right. I don't know, I think my spirit will be down. Uh, let's see, Los Angeles, we got 65, Dr. Catherine. Jerry Weaver is in Chicago, and he has 40 degrees. Ooh. We've got uh, Sister Willa May, Willie May, and she's got 48 there in Philly. Philly. All right, we've got uh, Columbus, Ohio, Marvin Miller. Welcome. And 70 degrees there in Columbus. Wow. wow. Yeah, we got Lil' Kim here, and she says that it's 54 in her part of Detroit. <laughs> amen. Amen. And Roxy calls it uh, flumonia. 
Blue Monia. Yeah, Blue Monia. She <laughs> said, right. And you know, you're going to be sick. So we're going we to keep everybody together. And we've got King and Queen Pierce. They're uh, in D.C. and it's 54 wow. degrees and it's cloudy there. So we want to say good afternoon. Hi, Mama Florence. We want to say good afternoon, good evening to everybody that's out there listening today. Um, we really appreciate your listenership. Don't forget to hit that like and that share button. Uh, we want to send this broadcast as far as we can. So hit hit the like and the share, hit the like and the share. Hallie said, uh, Pastor Jackie, that that was a preview of what's to come. Uh -huh. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. I All received right. that. <laughs> All <laughs> right. All right. All right. But we are, we are happy to be here today. Um, and I know we didn't see Richard on yesterday. We had a couple people ask about you. How are you? I'm doing great. I told you the dog ate my homework. <laughs> when Teresa told me, I said, maybe Teresa made that up. But the more and more I thought about it, I was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing fantastic, wonderful. It's a great day to be alive here today. Uh, today is voting day here in uh, California, so... After the show, I will walk around the corner and place my vote wow. and let let it be counted. Super Tuesday. Yeah. Super Tuesday, yes. Super Tuesday. All right. Uh, can I make an observation before we uh You can make an observation. Today, also, uh, it's March the 5th, the 60th anniversary of the March on Frankfurt. Uh, where uh, Martin Luther King marched with uh, 10,000 people up Capitol Avenue. And mm. I wanted to uh, address that because I don't know if, if anyone knew what the uh, march was about. Uh, the march led to the passage of the N Kentucky Civil Rights Act of 66. Kentucky was the first state south of the Mason-Dixon line to pass its own state level Civil Rights Act. Um, and that's significant for uh, the southern states. Um, but what was uh, most significant about that, uh, of course, some, some of you have seen the picture of my father who was at that march. And uh, oh. the plan was to go today uh, to the march and perhaps have some footage or whatnot, something we could share on the, on the show. Uh, but my father is ill, not feeling well, and so he decided he wasn't going to make that trip. And then I thought, uh, well, maybe I'll just go ahead and go just, you know, to be there. And then I thought, you know what? It wouldn't have the same significance. It wouldn't mean as much to me, you know, if he weren't there. Mm -hmm. You know, exactly. it, it would mean more to me if he were if he had been able to make it. Um, you know, my dad's 91, so you never know uh, how many more of these things he can attend. So uh, mm -hmm. I really thought it would be a good idea to go. But since he didn't want to go, that's okay. Um mm -hmm. But if y'all keep him in, in in your prayers, he's been sick for a few days. Um, they said he's got the flu. So uh, 90 year old, 91 year old and the flu, they probably don't mix very well. So uh, just kind of keep him in prayer. But uh, this is a significant day in this in the state of Kentucky. So I wanted to address that. Right. Amen. Amen. And we are uh, saying right along with Roxy. Uh, thank you, Teresa, for that moment in history. And we are also praying for your dad. Thank you. Um, yeah, we are praying for your dad. That is such a historical thing to be actually be a part of history. And I think we take a lot for granted, for granted. Um, mm -hmm. that we are actually making history. Uh, and like we were talking yesterday on Edna's show, uh, it's too many first that we we are meeting you know what i'm saying these first you would think that they're dead and gone but right. some of these first are younger than me yes yep. mm -hmm. and and so we are actually living and making history and we want to honor those who went before us and we know they had a hard road to hope they did um, yes. and so we want to thank personally thank your dad teresa uh, for what he's done and what he means to the movement. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we are praying for him. 
that the Lord will strengthen his body and give him a little more grace to go on and see what the end is going to be. Amen. Thanks, everyone. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 Thanks for that, that uh, Black History Moment. And um, as you all know, that is women's, uh, it's Women's Month. Okay. And uh, we want to thank everybody for that. And we are celebrating on several of the shows on this station, um, have special women's guests on this month. As you know, we had Dr. Jessica. Jessica and was wonderful. I and love that, Jessica. Listen, listen. I'm gonna have to let her be, be, be my, my, my mentor. She said she do. I said, uh oh, wait a minute. Let me write this down so I can call <laughs> her and say help. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. She okay. is outstanding. And we're going to play that commercial today um, for the event that's coming up. And we want everybody to make sure that they go out and they support her in her endeavors because uh, we know that she is a woman of God and she. Mm -hmm. Uh, is sincere about what she's doing and we want to follow. We want to follow. Amen. All right. Amen. I have a guest. Oh, thank you, Lil' Kim. <laughs> we love you. And before we bring the guests on, I just want to remind everyone, do we lose an hour or gain? Far spring forward. Okay, oh, so we're going to lose that hour. Oh, I'm going to have to catch up. Oh, is that week. Sunday? That is Sunday. Oh, is my. it? Gee, oh, is it already time for that? <laughs> already. We're losing it now. Already. already. Oh, Lord. Now I'll, just, I'll be landing. Oh, I'm going to be really crazy with time then. Oh, yeah, God. yeah. And this is something because uh, the mommy, uh, Gordon, she said, we do Lawrence Bumpy Simmons was my son's great grandfather. He was the first black man to play football for the University of Louisville. Uh, okay. um, I always pushed his school to allow him to do his projects on his own family. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. All right, so we do have a guest. We do have a guest. And I tell you, I cannot explain how uh, this makes me feel to have this person here. He's very special to the Los Angeles area and beyond, and he's just, he's special to me and his family. I'm tiger happy and elephant glad to be able to have him on this show today. And that is none other than Andre Russell. Andre Russell is the host and producer of Spread the Word, the number one radio show on Sundays in Los Angeles on 100 or 102.3 KJLH, that's kindness, joy, love, and happiness. All right. He, he co-created this show with Stevie Wonder. This popular gospel radio show has the dominated the airwaves for years. Originally from Meridian, Mississippi, that means he's a country boy, Andre <laughs> has been in broadcasting for over 25 years. His career includes working as a television sportscaster, television news anchor, radio programmer, and DJ. Currently, he is the program director, music director, and on-air personality at the historical 102.3 KJLH. He has been selected as Radio Program Director of the Year and most recently as Gospel DJ of the Year for the second time. All right. Having served as the halftime voice and music coordinator for the Los Angeles Lakers for nine years, Andre has received two NBA championship rings. Wow. Nice. Andre has hosted concerts for Patti LaBelle, Kim, Ed, Earth, Wind and & Fire, Eric Bernay, Charlie Wilson, Anthony and Hamilton, Brandy, New Edition. You, the list just goes on. If you're somebody, he has been there hosting for you. Andre can be heard on a variety of award-winning CDs for artists such as Norman Hutchins and Beverly Crawford. Get it, get it, get it. 
<laughs> Most recently, he performed on the Bible Experience, the Old Testament, an audio performance of the Bible, which features star-studded casts that includes Blair Underwood, Angela Bassett, and Samuel L. Oh, Jackson. Wow. Um, as a, I'm sorry, devoted to making a difference in the community, he speaks at career days events and other programs at schools around Los Angeles. He is also the CEO of Stevie Wonder's We Are You Foundation, a nonprofit created to assist underprivileged children and to uplift the community. Andre loves the Lord and he's dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ in the music ministry of Spread the Word, which airs every Sunday from 12 to 6 p.m. That's Pacific Standard Time in Los Angeles on 102.3 KJLH and the worldwide internet at KJLHradio.com. I tell you, I'm going to go jump. I'm going <laughs> to skip around the block twice. That's how happy I am. To welcome my good friend Andre Russell. Give up for Andre Sandman Ovation. Clap your hand. Welcome, Brother Andre. Amen. Amen. And we will bring Brother Andre on. Uh, we are so excited to have him on this show. Uh, and it's just he's just a wealth of information. And we're going to just tap into all of that. Uh, and before we uh, go on with our next song and then we bring our guest on, I did want to have, I had two uh, congratulations that I wanted to give out. And one is for uh, Joe Evelyn Parker. Yes, who yes. Is a man. We want to give her a hand. She is, uh, she has been appointed to the board of directors for the Gospel Music Workshop of America. Oh, so, wow. so we want to say congratulations to her. She's a past guest on the show. And we also want to say congratulations to none other than our own, we call her our own, Lemmy, Dr. Lemmy Battles. And she is receiving the President's Lifetime Achievement. <laughs> Okay. Um, award nice. on May 4th and we just want to say congratulations. We love it when good things happen to good people. Uh, so uh, congratulations, Lemmy. Congratulations, Joe Evelyn. And we're going to play this song and we'll be right back with none other than Dr. Andre Russell from KJLH. We'll be right back after this. This is the Sandy Rose Show <laughs> right here on WVTC Detroit.
Um, want to say thank you thank you jesus thank you for all that you've done for us thank you thank you jesus and we want to say welcome welcome to our special guest today who is none other than andre russell from <laughs> kjlh the program manager i mean and the famous he you don't even live in los angeles and we know who you are okay. <laughs> listen <laughs> I am Dad, so proud to be this? here. <laughs> Let me say this one time. Uh, thanks for rolling with a brother. <laughs> thanks, for, thank, thanks for rolling with a brother, Richard. I appreciate you, brother. <laughs> <laughs> and I was telling them before the show started that I just so happened to um, hear uh, Norman Hutchins, uh, uh, Pastor Norman Hutchins, uh, infomercial and I watched it till the end and when mm -hmm. they got to the end they were it, hi this is Andre Russell <laughs> <laughs> and I was like you better go ahead go ahead so, listen yes. Norman's a great friend of mine yeah I loved and Richard I got okay Richard's my hype man I take him everywhere I go <laughs> but I, and the song you Richard was talking about with Beverly Crawford is it's about time for a miracle so at yeah. the end that's me saying don't stop get it get it that's actually me and I ended up on the recording by accident. She was recording her CD live here in Los Angeles at Faithful Central Church. And I was the MC and I'm just joking around as I tend to do when I host. And somebody had the Holy Ghost down front. A lady was getting it. And I was like, oh, don't stop, get it, get it. And they kept it on the recording. So that's how it ended up on there. Yeah. <laughs> but you're hey, ladies. Good. Hi, ladies. Richard. Hey, Detroit. I love Detroit. Let me tell you, I talk about this all the time. Detroit. For gospel music, it ain't no joke. That that church, what you played at the beginning of the program, I got to go to that church. And I got to meet that lady who was singing that song. That was some Holy Ghost. Come well, on now. That was actually <laughs> Renee Crutchfield. She's uh, one of the new G singers. And uh -huh. that was her singing at the Potter's House. What? I'm writing that down. If you see me, I'm writing her name down. Yeah, man. Renee Crutchfield. Now, she is no joke. I'm sure she's on listening as we speak. If you're out here listening, Renee, uh, give a shout out. Renee is, she's a force to be reckoned with. Yes. Andre, Renee. she's going to be with uh, Paul Parker Mother's Day weekend. Out here in L.A.? Yes. In Long yes. Beach. Wow. Long Beach. Okay. That's see, I told you. Richard is my hype man. He lets me know what's happening. Right. Wow. And you need that. You need that. You know? Yeah. I got to have her on spread the word here on KJLH. That girl is bad. Yes, you do. Yes, yeah. you do. Yes, you I do. I told her about you, you, Andre. <laughs> I'm sorry? I told her about you. Okay. And Richard, she's one more looking, thing I got to. Wait, she's what? looking for you. <laughs> okay. Well, we're looking for each other. I'm looking for her in the daytime with a flashlight. That girl is bad, man. <laughs> Let me tell you something. And one more thing I got to correct my hype man, Richard, on. He didn't finish the bio because he just read the R&B artists I've hosted for. He didn't mention uh, Dorinda and Karen, the Clark sisters, and Kiara and Marvin Sapp and Kirk Franklin and Donnie McClurkin and all those folks, Tina Campbell, because I don't just, I don't want y'all to think I'm a heathen. I do all of it. I do the gospel. That's my main thing. <laughs> I didn't forget, Andre, my printer went, went out on me. I understand. I understand. We ran out of ink. I understand, Richard. <laughs> It happens, Richard. <laughs> yeah. We'll take you to Home Depot. Richard, we'll go to Home Depot later, brother. I got exactly. you. All right. I'll call the amazing people. They'll bring it right to the door. Okay. Right. Yeah. And I, I want to check in like all the wonderful listeners. I'm in Los Angeles, Inglewood to be exact, not far from LAX airport, not far from the beach. And it's 65 degrees and sunny here in, in LA. There you go. Right. All right. All right. <laughs> that's what that's what we want. That you how did you get into radio i want to ask kind of a double question because you're from meridian mississippi how mm -hmm. did you get into radio and then how did you get to los angeles here's the story want to hear it here yeah. we go <laughs> let me tell you okay so when i was in like high school junior high high school i used to love to listen to the radio and i listened all the time and i had a couple of, of my favorite djs i listened to and i actually like the djs more than I liked the music. I loved hearing what they were saying and I thought they were so cool. So when I was a senior in high school, they had a, a guest DJ contest on the local radio station. They said, send us a tape of your voice and this, that, and the other. And I actually won. So I got to sit in on the radio and do my own show for 30 minutes. And, and I tell you, the bug bit me then. So then when I went to college, I majored in radio and TV broadcasting. And four months into my freshman year, 
my instructor said, boy, you're really catching on. I can get you a job at a local station wow. if you like. I almost yeah. fell out, right? But yeah, so I started um, four months into my freshman year of college. I was going to college to play basketball. I was on a basketball scholarship. But once I said, I got into that radio and TV broadcasting thing, I really liked it. So uh, she got me a job on a local station and I've been on the radio ever since I was 18 years old. Wow. Now, I'm yeah. going to ask you. To Los Angeles. Okay, fast forward. Uh, okay, I was at the station at a very young age. I became program director there at the station. They kind of threw it in my lap. I didn't know what to do. And I never forget the guy said, oh, you'll handle it. You'll learn. You're the new program director. And I was 23 years old. So guess what? I learned. And so in addition to just being on the radio, I also was learning about the management side and being a program director and a music director at a very young age. So then uh, fast forward about four more years, I was like, okay, enough of Mississippi. I want to join all my older siblings. I'm the youngest of nine. All my older siblings had moved to L.A. When they would finish high school, they would come out here, go to college. Well, two of them went to Tennessee State first, then moved out here. The rest of them would come straight to L.A. from high school and come go to college out here and get established. So when I would come visit them, I really liked L.A. and California. So, of course, after a while, I said, I'm going to join my older siblings. Mm -hmm. So I packed up my mom and dad. By then, they were much older, and we moved to L.A. And when I got here, because I had connections and I met um, some of the programmers from L.A., because I had become a P PD at such a young age, going to conferences and this and the other and mm -hmm. conventions. When I got here, I called one of them. The guy here at KJLH, his name is Cliff Winston. I said, Cliff, I've actually moved to L.A. He said, well, I really come by the station tomorrow. I came by the station tomorrow and I've been here ever since. That was 35 <laughs> years ago. Wow. Wow. 35 years ago, I've been here at KJLH working for your homeboy. Y'all's homeboy, Stevie Wonder, of course, brought yes. that Detroit up in here. Amen. So I've been, Amen. <laughs> yep. So Stevie's a great person, as you all know. And Richard said earlier, KJLH stands for kindness, joy, love, and happiness. So I came in and can't leave. So here I am. Mm -hmm. Andre, you kind of answer a question that I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you, how did you talk about you living in uh, Meridian and how did that help you? to live in Los Angeles. But before I was going to ask you that, I, I was going to ask, who is your favorite sister? Don't answer <laughs> that. Don't answer that. <laughs> He's messing with me now because he goes to a church with one of my sisters. That's why he's asking me that. <laughs> all of them. I, I know how to be diplomatic. All, it's it's election day here in LA. I'll be dip, it, all of them, Richard. All of them. Now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> so now, yeah. um, you, you're a program director. A lot of people just know they turn the radio on. There's music. There are personalities. Um, what, but they don't know what a program director does. What, what is your day-to-day -day function? What are well, and let me, let me full disclosure, let me clear it up. For, I was program director here at KJLH for 20 years, but more recently I moved over uh, and I'm, now I'm still doing a lot of stuff here, community affairs director and on the air and this and the other. But um, we have a, a new program director, a younger brother, Chris Malone, but I still you know love working with Chris. But a program director is responsible for everything at the station. I mean, from the music you play to the DJs that you hire to what the DJs are saying on the air to the imaging, the jingles and the drops that you hear between the music to when you go into commercial breaks, the, the contest that you do on the air, whether we're giving away gas cards or cash or a car or whatever it is, the program director is responsible for everything, working with the engineer to make sure the sound is crisp and right. So literally, a program director is responsible for everything at the radio station. His job is 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm. Uh, Andre, we wonderful. didn't mention this. I wanted to mention this. Sunday, you celebrated 28 years with Spread yes. the Words. 28 years for a gospel show I do here in L.A. called Spread the Word. And if you're in other parts of the country and you ever want to hear us on Sundays, uh, the show is on Pacific Standard Time, West Coast Time, 12 noon to 7 p.m. every Sunday. And uh, it's called Spread the Word. Stevie Wonder came up with that concept 28 years ago, and we celebrated 28 years this past Sunday. And wow. uh, he asked me back then, he said, man, we need to do a gospel show. I was working for another station here back in the day. I was actually working for two stations at one time. And I heard you play a piece earlier about Edna Tatum. Yes. Edna Tatum was one of the DJs at that other station. We worked side by side. Okay. okay. And it was, it was called wow. KGFJ. It was a heritage station here in L.A. So KGFJ, the last few years of its existence, it was gospel. So I actually worked there and here because it wasn't a conflict because this station, KJLH, didn't play any gospel. We were strictly R&B. KGFJ was all gospel. Mm -hmm. 
So I worked for both stations. Some days I'd run, I'd get off the air maybe at one, 12 o'clock on one, I'd be on air at two o'clock on the other one. So I was, it was fun though, it was fun. But when KGFJ was sold and it went off the air, Stevie said, man, you know, LA doesn't really have any gospel. Uh, we should do something on KJLH on Sundays. He said, well, since you know gospel, do you want to host it? I was like, absolutely. So boom, we went into spread the word 28 years ago. And here we are 28 years later. And it's it's just done extremely well. It's actually enabled us to go 24 hours of gospel on from midnight Saturday night to midnight Sunday night. But my show, my portion is noon uh, Sunday to 7 p.m. And if folks want to hear us, you can hear us anywhere in the world. We have an app, a KJLH mobile app that's free. And if you download the app, you can hear us anywhere in the world in real time. KJLH. Stevie Wonder got the we got the best app anywhere, except for the one, of course, that the Sandy Rose show it on. Uh, and not better now. We got the second best app. Sandy Rose show got the best app. We got the second best app. They gotta be number two, don't they? That's right. <laughs> uh, uh, Andre, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. There are some stations that um play a lot of top 40. And mm-hmm. some stations um, like ours play kind of what we want. Mm-hmm. What dictates what can be played? Because sometimes I'll, I'll hear some music that I don't think is really the music to get me ready for church, but it's, mm-hmm. it's gospel. You know what right. I'm saying? So who can, you know, who can choose what music uh, can be played? You know what? I'm in I'm in such a, a great position because we're an independent station owned by Stevie. So we play what's you know the best music truly. We don't have to play the political game or only play songs that have charted. If we find a song and we know it's a song that's gonna save someone's life or it's gonna move someone, it'll be a great song, we go with it, you know, and, and it really falls on me. I mean, I always have prayed about this and asked the good Lord to help me make the right decisions and play the right songs that someone's life may be saved, may be changed. So we play a lot of songs that you might not hear other places, you know, no. but we don't play the the corporate rules, if you will. In some stations I know do this where, yeah. oh, yeah. we can't play a song unless it's top 20, <laughs> unless it's charted. And we don't we don't play those rules. If it's a great song, whether it's a local artist or not a local artist, we play it. And I think that's one of the things that has kind of set us apart. I mean, we like the Sandy Rose show have won a, a stellar award, you know, for our programming here on Sunday. And. We just love to play the best music. I don't care if it's Donald Lawrence or Yolanda Adams or somebody big or if it's somebody small that's just coming out. But that song is saying the right things and I feel like it's going to touch someone's life or it sounds good. We'll, we'll try it out. We'll play it. Amen. Now, uh, Andre, I have a song coming out that I would like for you to play. We're not playing that one. We're not playing that one. <laughs> uh-uh. No, but actually, I just wanted to point out that Andre is the man, the guy. He has presented Janine White, uh, Renee Spearman, uh, David Daltrey. He has put them on the map just by presenting them. So, uh, and I want him to do that for me too. But thank <laughs> well, you know what's that, great? Andre. Those artists. You're welcome. Those artists that Richard just mentioned, they're all local artists here in the L.A. area, but they all have great music, have had great songs out. And yeah, we played them and they tested so well. And, and what, what I really love is later on, it may take a year. But then I started hearing them on Sirius XM and some of these other stations. I'm like, OK, they they this caught on, you yeah, know, but on. yeah. Yeah. But like Janine's White song um, was so good. Uh, it was like one of our highest testing songs for almost a year. I mean, it was just a great song. It had great energy. It reminded you of the song that a Renee Crutchfield was singing when the program started. You know, just a really good song, a churchy song. And she came out of West Angeles Church. And yeah. it was just, it, I mean, I just love gospel music. I grew up loving it in Mississippi. I did a, when I was one of that first station I worked at when I was around, I think when I was 18, 19, 20, I, we had a show on called The Noon Gospel Train. Now, my shift was 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. But at 12 noon every day, now this is an R&B station, like a WJLB in Detroit or somebody, right? Yeah. But at noon, they broke and played gospel for one hour. And we had a minister that would come in. His name was Reverend Charles Johnson. And he'd come in and I'd step aside. But instead of going on lunch break, I'd stand there and watch him and stay in the room. And I got familiar with the gospel music. Back then, we're talking about maybe the Edwin Hawkins singers, Oh Happy Day, and yeah. maybe Reverend James Cleveland or some of that stuff. But so many times he'd be off doing a revival or wouldn't be there. So guess who had to do the noon gospel train? Me. But it prepared me for what I ended up doing, what I even do today on the radio. It, it gave me an insight into gospel music at a very young age. And I was able to kind of learn how it worked. 
So translate that to me out here in LA working for KGFJ, which was all gospel with Edna Tatum. And then later when we started spread the word here. So I almost felt like I had a cheat sheet because I had been <laughs> in the gospel music since I was very young. Mm -hmm. So, um, and we also had something here like that. Uh, when uh martha jean the queen and i i i'm sure you're familiar with her you know you're not gonna i wouldn't even if i told you this story you wouldn't even believe me i'm best no. friends with her niece here really? in la really i kid really? you not diane's so daughter? I all, yes is diane's daughter not her daughter is it diane no i think it's diane's okay diane's i know it's martha jean's brother's daughter oh, okay okay yep Miss wow. Martha Jean's brother's daughter and our best friends. I kid you not. Yeah. When you said <laughs> you would break every day at noon, um, she mm -hmm. did the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. And here in Detroit and they would stop on the R&B station and mm -hmm. let her. She just played gospel until she got her own station. Um, but yep. at 12 noon every day we heard without a song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's, yep. That's so her niece and I has told me so much about her. So when I started hearing about her recently, I was like, oh, I know who that is. And even one of our DJs here at KJLH, Roland Bynum, who does an oldie show on Saturday. Roland used to work in Detroit. And I'm not sure which station, but he worked with her a long time ago in Detroit. Okay. And and yeah. trust me, uh, Stevie Wonder knows exactly. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah. I know. I mean, I'll ask know, him about she, it. Yeah. She, was like, she was the queen of Detroit. Mm -hmm. I know. And, and radio, that's, so funny that's you say how. That. We knew that radio, how important radio is mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. to the people because just being on the radio like that, you have a voice and you can speak to the people and for the people. So uh, mm -hmm. that, that's that is so funny. It's such a small world. It is. I know, it very is. much. I know she. I just found out who she was over the last couple of years, but now I know who she is. Wow! Wow! Yeah. So yeah, she she was a force to be reckoned with. A force right. to be reckoned with. Um, yeah, and <laughs> wow. she was like, was it WQBH? They put her, actually put her off of WJLB, and uh, she was off for a while, and she bought her own station, and she yep. named it WQBH, and that's the queen mm -hmm. is back home. So. Yep, <laughs> I'm telling you, I, I know the story, I'm just, and we were just talking about her, today is Tuesday, we we're just talking about her Saturday, Saturday, wow. and her 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 niece was showing me more pictures of her she had found and and information. She let me hear some. Matter of fact, she found some old audio of her and she was yeah. letting me listen to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. she she's on the internet and she would have a program every year at uh, it was the Palm Sunday Musical and it was mm -hmm. called the King of Kings. Yeah, and wow. listen, it wasn't nothing else going on in the city except. For the king of kings, and she <laughs> bring in all kinds of uh, gospel That's artists mm -hmm. uh, to the city, and uh, they would really, really, really have a great time. And but Monday was the best when she would take live calls in on Monday, <laughs> mm -hmm. and she if if they were calling in, Queen, my husband beat me. She she would say, "Were you at the King of Kings yesterday?" Because <laughs> we're talking about the King of Kings today, so uh -huh. <laughs> that's what we're talking about today. Wow. And she she get you together and really really nice, but she get you. <laughs> she get you. I, a live a legend in Detroit. Yeah, a legend. Yes. Yeah. A Absolutely. Legend in Detroit. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a little break, and uh, we will be right back after this. This is just a wonderful, wonderful interview that we have with none other than uh, Andre uh, and I, Andre Russell. And I was calling you Andre something else early today, but it was that was just in my mind. All right, but <laughs> <laughs> but we are so glad to have you here with us. And right after this, we will be right back, and we're going to play another. This is a brand new song from mm. none other than Betty Griffin Keller. And All Betty right. Griffin Keller yeah. is from the Los Angeles area. And this is a oh, brand yeah. new song. You need to put this in heavy rotation. Let's go. The <laughs> sister ain't playing with you. We'll Let's be go. right back after this. Hey, my name is Joe Smith. I'm a filmmaker here in Detroit, and I watch WVTC. And listen, watch and listen. You got the eyes and ears, both. The view. 
Go to your Apple or Google Play Store and download the WVTC Gospel Radio app today. You can also say, Alexa, play WVTC Radio Skills. Would you like to play WVTC Radio Network? Absolutely. Download it today. We are WVTC. <laughs> Detroit Gospel Internet Radio. What it is. What it is. We're gospel music. Preaching. Teaching. What it is. Encouraging. What it is. All up in what it is. Community. What it is. W V T C in your neighborhood. It's what we do. What it is. <laughs> Radio Detroit thanks the following supporters for their generous gifts of support to keep this station and these broadcasts coming your way. God bless you, we thank you, and we love you. This is WVTC Gospel Radio Detroit.
I'm going there, Bruce. Yes, I am. I'm going there. Say, I'm going there. I'm going there. One day is coming back I'm for going me. there. Yes, I am. When I see Jesus. When I see Jesus. When I see Jesus. When I yeah, we needed a little bit more of that song. Just a yeah. little bit more of that song. <laughs> Dr. Betty Griffin Keller. There it is. There it is. There it is. Come on, go with you. Go with me to a better place. You know, they don't sing about heaven no more. They don't mm. sing about heaven no more. But heaven is real. It's a prepared place for a prepared people. Mm. And we want to welcome everybody back to the Sandy Roll Show. And we have none other than our guest today, our special guest today, which is Andre Russell. I feel like I'm going to admit something. I feel like uh, Brother Larry did yesterday. He said, I, I, if Reverend Jessica came in the studio, you know I was going to be fanning out. And I think I'm fanning out. <laughs> Listen. I'm fanning out with Brother Russell here. I'm fanning out. <laughs> I'm having a good time. Let, can I say something really quick now? Somebody earlier asked me the question about how we determine what songs are played and how songs play. Mm -hmm. One of the things I look for when a song like that like by Betty Griffin Keller, when it talks about Jesus and God and going home in heaven, those those songs right there make it to the top of the list. And I want to hear them and check those out because so many gospel songs that this is me that are out now. It's like they try to skirt around it. You can't tell sometimes if it's an R&B song or a gospel song. And they, I, might, they do that on purpose. Yep. And see, I don't like that. I do not like that. So the songs that I know they're talking about God and Jesus, those are the ones I'm trying to play. I'm sorry. That's just it. Yes. Well, sir, let me say this. Now, you just answered my question. I was going <laughs> to ask you how you want to uh, impact in, in terms of your audience and your, your listeners with the song selection and what you select and why you select what you select. Mm -hmm. you just... Yeah, I, I don't like songs, as, as we used to say in the South, that straddle the fence. I don't like yeah. those songs. I don't. I like the ones that, hey, Betty Griffin Keller song, that one, you're going to hear that on Spread the Word soon. Yeah. Those are the kind yeah. I'm looking for. <laughs> I yes. love churchy songs. People that know me well and that send me music and say, well, Andre, you're going to like this one. It's a churchy song or it's a it's a choir. See, I love choirs. You, Detroit's the best choir city in the world, but I'm from down there by the Mississippi Mass Choir. Those are my homies. Okay. And uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? And and, and Miss Burks, you know what I mean? Yeah, Mama yeah, Burks and them. Come on, come yeah, on. yeah, yeah. So see, that's my kind of stuff that I love. So yeah, yeah. I was excited when 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 Richard said Detroit coming on a Detroit. I'm like, oh my goodness, man, which way to the Sandy Rose show? I'm trying to put me on. I love. See, here's one more thing. I actually have a little bit of a history in Detroit. I actually worked at WCHB okay. in the '90s doing sports. Believe it or not, but but I did it. But I did it from LA. Mm -hmm. Did you? Yeah, wow. because I was my other side of my career. You might have heard Richard mention the Lakers and championship rings. The other side of my career, I'm a sportscaster and I've done sports my whole life. So working for the L.A. Lakers and the L.A. Clippers, it was a given being an announcer, uh, just like my guy Mason, who back there, of course, works for the Detroit Pistons. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like so easy being an announcer and, and playing the music at the games because that's the other side of my career, music and sports. And so they used me out here to be like an NBA reporter, WCHP. So I would actually do the show from here, but I was on for a few months in Detroit on CHP. Amen. Amen. Andre, I want you to know I want, to I, want you to, I want you to know that you mm -hmm. are welcome here. We haven't had anybody in sports. I've been wanting and praying for somebody <laughs> to be on here that might want to talk about a little sports. Look, I'm your guy because, man, Richard will tell you, I cover football, basketball, baseball, track, anything. You ask me any question you want to know, I can tell you off the top of my head. I'm already already ready to go. I, I love sports. I want to know how how you do it. Um, you know, with somebody doing basketball, we have uh, one of our uh, local announcers here, uh, John Mason. And he, right. that's why I mentioned a moment ago, Mason. Uh -huh. yeah, I know Mason. Mason. Yeah, and he he is the announcer for the Pistons. Mm -hmm. And after a while, I would be like, you know, really. <laughs> <laughs> I love How doing do that. that. I started working for the Lakers in nineteen and the NBA in nineteen ninety two. Believe it or not. And it was just all of my jobs that fell in my lap. Do you know? I've, yeah. the, God has been yeah. so good to me. I've never applied for a job in my life. 
They yeah. just yeah. always call me and have offered me all these great jobs at these radio stations and, and these uh, sports teams. And so um, in 1992, I got a call from the Lakers one day because I had gotten friendly with some of the people in the PR department. And I was going to the games, covering the games to do sports here at the radio station. And the lady said, hey, you come to the game tonight. And I said, oh, yeah, I'll be there in a little while. And she said, can you bring some CDs? Because we want somebody to play music during timeout. Because the guy who had been doing that had um, gotten on drugs and fell off the map or whatever. And this was the first game of the season. So I showed up and did it. And at the end of the night, they showed up with a contract saying, this is what we're going to pay you. And, and you get tickets for every game to give to friends or whatever. And I wanted to tell them I would have done that for free. But they started. <laughs> because I love the NBA and I love doing it. And I started working for them that way. Next thing you know, the league is they have me training other NBA, other um, announcers around the league and showing guys how to do it all around the, the, this, the country as far as playing the music when it's a timeout and ta and doing the announcements like what Mason does and so forth and so on. So it's something I love. I just love doing it. So, I mean, how do you you keep up? Because you have to be the eyes for the radio, the people who are listening, especially back in the day when most people weren't watching TV, they were listening mm -hmm. to all their sports on their transistor radio. So, mm -hmm. I mean, how do you commentate? Is that difficult for you? No, it's a natural for me because okay. I, I know sports okay. so well. I Like every okay. morning I read, Two newspapers, and I, I read the whole newspaper, but the sports sections for sure from front to back. And that's the LA Times and USA Today. And then also I'm looking online. Also, I'm going to these sporting events. So I'm, I'm actually meeting and talking to these coaches and players. I'm at these games. You know, sometimes it can get hectic. And like last night, it was a Laker game here in town. But instead of me going, I said, like, I'm going to watch this one on TV. Because I knew I had to be on the Sandy Rose show today. I had to be I had to be fresh. You know what I mean? So, so if I don't attend them, I at least watch them. You know, but I keep up. I just keep up with what's going on, and that's what all sports: football, basketball, baseball. I keep up, and I love I love sports, so it's easy. And I played them all when I was in high school and college, so it's a natural for me. I've been doing this since I was about 14, 15 years old, keeping up with sports. So it's just very easy for me to do. I used when I was a sports anchor out here on TV. Uh, I used to sometimes I remember one time they had a problem with the teleprompter and uh, I had written the story and put it in there, but the prompter wasn't working. So I was like, don't worry about it. Just give me the camera. And I did the entire sports uh, piece off the top of my head because I knew what to talk about. And I knew what games were coming up and who had lost last night and who was playing. And it was just easy. I just love sports. So it's as easy as doing the gospel on Sunday because I love it so much. It's fun playing gospel music on Sunday, you know, and doing that. So who who are some of your favorite uh, gospel artists? Man. Uh, okay. And Where do know, I start? I did not say your favorite because I'm not going to do that. So who are Richard, some of your favorite? Okay. Richard, don't start no mess now. But uh, <laughs> okay. One of my favorites. What? Two or three of them. I'll, I'll tell you a few of my favorites. Marvin Sapp. Yeah, he knows it. I've told Kirk Franklin absolutely is one of my favorites. Um, uh Fred Hammond's always been one of my favorites, and I've told him that as well. Donnie McClurkin's one of my favorites. Yeah. I love some of the artists like, I love artists like Dottie Peoples, you know, and artists like that, and the Mississippi Mass Choir, who I mentioned earlier. And it's, uh, I'm a big Donald Lawrence fan. So it's so many uh, gospel artists that I really, really love. And then don't mention, I love Israel Holden. I love the Clark Sisters and all of them, whether they're together or doing things individually. And it's get so it, wonderful it, when I- it. Yeah, when yeah, I get to get talk it. to these, <laughs> to Beverly Crawford also, by the way, is one oh, of my yeah. faves. So yeah, I have yeah. a lot of, I, love, I have a lot of, Jay, you know, my new favorites probably though, besides William Murphy. And when I say new, I mean, not been around for a hundred years. I love um, Jason Nelson and Jonathan Nelson, both of them. I just think they're amazing. Mm -hmm. All yeah. right. And, and uh, I see that Renee is on now. Uh, and she's saying hi to you and hi to everybody else. Renee is is the one that sang the song in the beginning. Oh, Renee, I'm coming to get that's, you, girl. Yeah, that's I'm coming, I'm coming that's to get it. you, Renee. I love <laughs> Renee. You can sing. Not sing. She can S-A-N-G. She can sing. I love that. Hey, Renee. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, and that's what we just love to do is connect folks here at yes. WVTC. WVTC. That's right. 
And she's <laughs> uh, she's like, uh, she says, Daddy People, Gail Arbuckle, Vicky Winans, old school. That's mm-hmm. what I just said. Mm-hmm. Like old school. We yeah, old school like old school. Yep. We do. Yep. Yep. Yeah, she can sing. I love old Andre, school. I'm practicing trying to get a radio voice like you. Did you practice <laughs> yeah, or is right. that natural? I did not. I'm, I did not. It's natural. What I've always done, Richard, is try to talk in my regular voice. Like I talk to you all right now. I don't want to have to go in the air, air later and be like, hey, it's Andre Russell. Okay, see, see. No, I just I, I've always used my natural voice and I just go with it. All right. And you know, and it seems like they try to uh, uh, make you go into that uh, your mom's telephone voice. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> right. you knew when the bill collector was called. Uh, uh, yes, right. uh, right. uh, yes, yes. No, you don't. Hey, it's the Sandy Rose Show, baby. Hey, no, I, don't do do <laughs> I don't do that. Well, it sounds good, even if you don't do it. It does sound good. <laughs> <laughs> But see, the reason I don't do that one is because I'd have to do it all the time. Yeah, or if I went to speak to some, if I went to do speak to some kids at a career day, then I'd have to stand in front of the, the room and sound their way. Like, You're not the guy on the radio, <laughs> you know. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> you'd have to do it all the time. And who wants mm-hmm. to do that? Right, exactly. Now, and I can see if you're, you know, recording commercials or something like that. Right. But mm-hmm. um, when you're just talking, that that would be difficult. To oh yeah, in and out, in and out. I but I just had, finished doing a few commercials before I came on the um, Sandy Rose show today. As a matter of fact, just finished doing some commercials. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think it's probably better that uh, you know when somebody hears you on the on the radio, when you're talking to them like they're actually in front of you, that makes you feel connected. Mm-hmm. You know, not this mm-hmm. made up voice that that you don't normally speak. That actually exactly. makes you want to listen. I think. Right, 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 right. Absolutely. So, so with that, Andre, so uh-huh. what would you say is one of the uh, main keys to su- being successful in that industry? Man, mine is simple. It, it's so simple. Miss Sandy, it is prayer. I pray every day of my life. In the morning, I read the Bible. I just finished for the fifth time. Where's the camera? Five times. Now I'm on number six. I mean, I literally read it from beginning to end. And every day I read the word before I leave my house, before I step out on a journey. And so back in the day, a long time ago, I used to, you know, haven't been in radio now for a long, long time. And I used to hear and see people that had been on the air. Next thing you know, egos have gotten away from them or drugs have gotten them or something else. So I always prayed not to be that way. I was I was the Lord. I love doing this, but I don't want to end up like, you know, this way. I want to remain humble. So I used to pray for that. And I think after a number of years, finally, I said, OK, God, I got this now. I can handle it. You know, <laughs> so I've just always prayed and just um, tried to remain humble and tried to give back because I've hired so many people in my career. And I'm proud of that. And the one, you know, some didn't work out, and, and but most of them did. So I just love uh, I think being humble is the key, being humble and just staying focused. You know, don't, don't get caught up in in no mess, as they say, and just exactly. stand true. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Keep it all right. clean. Live, yep. live what you talk about. There you go. There you now, go. Andre, uh, uh, going up, piggybacking on that point of being humble. Mm-hmm. Now, my wife say I'm a groupie, but I, actually I'm a <laughs> professional groupie. And <laughs> and you know, I'm, you're one of my. I'm one of your favorite fans, and I've I seen know. you everywhere, mm-hmm. and you are you are everywhere. With people, and you're just humble, kind, and every, you want people to, you let people come around and touch you. You let them take picture with you. What mm-hmm. is a normal life for Andre Russell? Okay, let's see. Today, um, what will I do when I leave here today? I'm gonna go shopping. I need to stock up on my water because I drink water 99% of the time. That's all I'm drinking now. So I need to go get some more water. I have so much bottled water in my house, you wouldn't believe it. So I'm gonna go stock up on bottled water. I'm getting a little low. And I'm going to go home and watch sports and just relax. And you know what else I do to relax? I love old Westerns. So I'll be looking for gun smoke or, yeah. or some of those. Look, I'll be looking for high chaparral. Or I'll be looking for the wild, wild west. Bonanza. And those take Bonanza. Those take me away from everything. Right. If I've had a long day or a stressful day no. and I just relax. Richard, today I'm doing nothing but relax. And then tomorrow 
Uh, might be a little bit longer because there's a Laker game tomorrow night. So I'll leave the radio station at, say, 3 or 4 o'clock and head downtown and go to the game. Get there really early because I like to network with the players and the coaches and this and the other. So I'll go before they even open the arena. That way I'm in there watching the guys practicing and I can – you know, just everything so 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 even that there's no pressure and I can talk to the coaches if I want to or whatever. But and I love talking to the other broadcasters as well. I talk to the guys and girls from ESPN or from the local network, CBS, whatever. Wow. And and that's why I do a lot of networking and make a lot of great contacts uh, doing things like that. So I just try not to let it be too stressful, Richard. If I've got to, I used to now I, in the past, I couldn't handle all that. And I'd find myself tired and stressed out. But now if it's a lot going on, I, I'll skip the game. I'll just watch it on TV and get the same uh, knowledge, if you will. I can still go on the air and talk about who won or who lost and how many points so-and-so had, you know? So now do you, do you actually commentate during the game? Not anymore. I used to work for the Lakers and the Clippers okay. and the LA Sparks. Now I'm not working for them now. I work just, I'm only doing some, a sports podcast for here for KJLH and then occasionally on the air, you know, going on the air doing, um, doing um, uh, some, some sports uh, updates or whatnot. But yeah. So you got a permanent press pass. That's what it is. <laughs> That's a pretty good way to put it. Yeah. Okay. I can't go to, and the pass, the pass is all access. Yeah, it's all access pass, so I can go in the locker room or anywhere. But I worked for these teams for so long, and I worked in the NBA for so long. Yeah, I can. I still have to have my pass, so if I go with no pass, I'll get turned around. But right. yeah, I make sure I make sure I don't go without it. And, yeah, and that way I can they, go. You know, because they could have, for whatever reason, removed your pass. So. Exactly. So yeah, I still get to go. I'm lucky and blessed to be able to go to the games and talk to whoever the players or whatever. That's great. Because like oh, uh, through you? the years, I've been it's been so many great players I've been associated with from Magic Johnson to Kobe Bryant. I mean, I was really close to Kobe. I was there when he got here at 17 years old and he and I had a great relationship. But I also have a great relationship with Magic Johnson and all the ones in between. So, yeah, I know those guys really well. So who do you fan out over? Oh, now, you know, it's only one person I haven't met that I want to meet. And that's Dr. J. If you're an old school basketball person, Julius Irving. I've never met Dr. J. And I've missed him a couple of times, but we were in the same building. But I missed him. And I, somebody will say, oh, did you see Dr. J? I'm like, where? And they'll go, oh, he's over there. And I go over there and they say, oh, he just left. I'm like, oh, man. So that's the only person I haven't met yet that I really want to meet is Dr. J. <laughs> the only athlete, yeah. So now have you ever met um, athlete or singer or or anyone. Have you ever met anyone that, and you said, oh, 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 you fanned out? Um, Well, back in the day, no. Back in the day, I used to interview back Michael in Jordan. Yeah. Back in the day, when uh, Michael Jordan, I used to interview Jordan. But I didn't fan out, I guess, because I've been around the sports <laughs> thing so long. But I got to interview him, uh, Oprah and Denzel Washington and Halle Berry and I, I didn't fan out over any of them, but uh, I've interviewed him sure. pretty much and got pictures with almost everybody. And Richard Nichols took most of the pictures I have with everybody, by the way. This guy's a great wow. photographer. He has <laughs> tons wow. of pictures of me. He is a groupie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, Andre, I wanted to ask you, what advice, when you go to uh, career day, what advice would you give a young person who would like to have a career in radio? Um, I would tell them to go to a, a broadcasting school and not one of the ones that just where you got to spend an arm and a leg. So many of these junior colleges like here in L.A., it, that's some of the best schools to learn broadcasting. You could just go and take the radio and TV broadcasting classes, or whatever, and that can get you started in the right way. So I would say community colleges, junior colleges, if you can afford the majors, like if you're here in L.A. and you can afford USC, School of Annenberg, fine. But if you can't, El Camino College, Santa Monica College, where I'm on the board. Those those colleges are just as good, in my opinion, to get you going in broadcasting and then try to get an internship at radio stations and just, you know, get your foot in the door and try to be versatile and learn different things like uh, behind the scenes. Don't just try to say, oh, I got to be on the mic or in front of the camera. Right. Learn to operate that camera and be behind the scenes. And um, th that's the simplest way, Richard, the simplest thing I would say. Mm. Diversity. Now, you, so, what's key to radio. getting it? I'm sorry? I was going to say, what is key to getting an internship? Um, well, the key is to just contact the radio station and see if they have like a internship program available, you know, 
And if you can get in the radio station um, uh, doing an internship, that's great because then you're in there and you get to learn, even if it's a non-paid. If you can get in there and get to learn and be a part of it, like ask if they have a street team, for instance, because we do here. And I hire a lot of kids and younger people. And some of them are not even kids. Some of them in their 30s and 40s. But we need people to work, to go out at events and set up and have banners up that say KJLH and whether we're giving out prizes or not. But um, being a, being part of a street team is really good. All so right. other, other than, than radio, what is your passion? Uh, probably sports, which I keep saying. Yeah, that, that's probably it. <laughs> Uh, sports, yeah, because it's so many different sports that I um, that I like. So I would probably say sports is my passion besides radio. Yeah. You know, you mentioned uh, Kobe Bryant earlier. Um, mm -hmm. What was that like? Uh, you know, as far as uh, anything that you may have presented regarding his um, tragic passing, um, how did that go with you? When did you do a special piece? On I that. did. Okay. I did a I did a piece, and the guys from ESPN told me what I did. Uh, they said, "Man, you should have submitted that for an Emmy," because it was just natural for me to do that because I was so close to Kobe, and he and I were always. I mean, like I said, literally when he got off the bus at 17 years old, um, it was I was about to do one of his games at Cal State uh, Long Beach, and he and Derek Fisher. I don't know if you know him, another player oh, yes, that played I with do. Kobe. I do. They <laughs> they both were were rookies, and Kobe was still 17. He hadn't even turned 18 at the time. And he just went to the prom with Brandy. And so when he got here and stepped off the bus, I met him there and said, hey, I work for the Lakers. Welcome to the team. Welcome to L.A. I shook his hand. And I, that night I did the game. So if you Google it, Kobe's first game, that's my voice you're here doing the game that he and Derek Fisher played in. Wow. And they did win. Kobe had, I forgot, maybe 38 points. And Fisher might have had 28 or something like that. But he and I were just tight from that day. Always close, always cool. And Kobe was he was like Michael Jordan. He was about business. He was about practicing hard, playing hard. And he didn't party and hang out with a lot of those guys, which was good. You know, he was all about being a great um, basketball player. And so I almost talked to him like a little brother and some things I told him. And I'll just say what it was. The first conversation I had with him was about groupies. And I was telling him to watch out for groupies, stay away from them, be careful. And at that moment, there was some much older people older ladies trying to come at him. He was 17, mind you. And these, these people were in their 30s. So that was like a learning experience right there. And I'd say, hey, this is what you do, do it, and this is what you don't do. And so from that point on, we were always close. So of course, when, he, when, he, when we lost him and his daughter, that was tough. Yeah. And so about two weeks later, I did a special on the radio here. It was a three-hour special. And I had all the players and coaches and people that knew him, and I had them in the station. And that sta our station was packed that night. And I had from Byron Scott, Derek Fisher, James Worthy, I mean, Magic Johnson, ex-players, current players, right. people that coached him, all kind of people that had a connection to Kobe. I had him on the, even the guy who had did it, the music for his um, his uh, muse that won, a, that won a, what was it, an Emmy or something, the, the, the movie that he did. But I just had all types of people that had a connection with Kobe on. And it was a, it was a lot of tears shed. But sure. it was... Looking back, I would say it's probably one of my best, most proudest moments in my career that night hosting that program from 7 to 10 p.m. Uh, and putting from producing it and hosting it. It was a lot of work, but it was great. So that was one of the things I remember about that. But I've never cried so much about somebody that wasn't in my family. And I remember talking to other athletes and coaches and people, and they were all saying the same thing. They said, man, this is two or three weeks later. They said, I can't stop crying. I said, I know, me too. So it was just really tragic what happened. But yeah, he was my guy. We were really close. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. I didn't mean to bring everybody down. Dang. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Back up a little bit. Um, I know that's right. I always have something to say. <laughs> trying to give the team an opportunity. <laughs> well, that was my question. Wait. All right. but, um, I have a question, Andre. Um, mm -hmm. What changes have you seen in radio uh, since the beginning when you started? Wow, it's changed a lot. I mean, a whole lot. Because to be quite honest with you now, terrestrial radio is not as important as it used to be. Because a lot of people now have so many different ways to get their music. You know what I mean? So people don't come to radio as much as they used to. They still come. But now... They come for different reasons. And now you just share your audience with so many different 
uh, avenues, if you will, the way people get music now and information. They still come to radio research shows for new music and for info, yeah. but they just don't come as much as they used to once you started getting... Uh, and that's, you know, could that change the whole record label game, too, because, it you know, sure once did. the streaming start, I mean, the downloads and the this that, and the other, and it, it, it changed the game a whole lot. So yeah, that's the biggest way. change, Richard. Uh, that Those are the biggest changes. I mean, you just don't have as big of the slice of pie as you used to have in radio. Now we share it so much, you know, and then in the L.A. area, so many African-Americans and black folks have moved out to get affordable housing. They've moved out where Richard lives, for instance, they moved maybe. 50 miles, 60 miles from LA. And so a lot of them can't get the station like like they used to, but that's why we offer an app. And of course they can get us online, but we just don't have as many listeners right here in LA as we used to. You know, the population has dwindled so much as for the black folks in LA County, but you know, we're still striving and, and rolling, but we did pick up more of course across the country now and around the world because of the app. Mm -hmm. But it's changed a lot, Rich. It really has, man. It, it's not what it used to be. You see so many radio stations now letting the DJs go and just playing the music, you know, and things like that. That used to never happen. We're one of the few stations, traditional radio stations that still have full-time DJs and even DJs on overnight. You can listen to us at 2 or 3 in the morning and you hear a DJ, where most stations now, you won't hear a DJ at 2 or 3 in the morning. They'll, they'll have just everything will be automated, you know. And, you so, know, it, and just society, everything has changed because there was a time that, you know, we only had seven channels. Mm -hmm. uh, the odds are, you know, 50 percent of us that are in the room saw the same thing last night. Right. Right. You know, and now it's so many options. It's so many. No so, doubt. You know, yep. even as far as radio, are you trying to reinvent radio or do something different? Uh, to to bring the people back or I wouldn't say reinvent it because you just have to be more um, more creative, if you will. Yeah. And, and you know what? Our boss is, is the one that's really uh, doing a lot of that. And I'm talking Stevie Wonder, of course, he always has great ideas. And, and we're always talking about things we can do to, you know, enhance and make what we do better and make, you know, make it attractive for people to still stay with us and listen, you know, and not um, go away. Because like you mentioned a minute ago, you look at ESPN. ESPN alone has about 10 channels. So, yeah. you know, they, it's like sometimes they're fighting against themselves. It's like, well, wait, you got a basketball game here, a football game here. And over here you got a cornhole where they toss the, thing, the bean bag through the hole in the thing. They Which just is got now so much a sport. <laughs> right. They have so much stuff. They don't even know what to do with all those channels. But, uh, you know, anyway, it's it's. Um, it's it's crazy. It really is. It's crazy. But yeah, it's a uh, it's a challenge. It really is. It's a challenge. So are the advertisers, um, do you have any of the different advertisers now as opposed to the advertisers you used to have 10 years ago? Um, Absolutely. And you know what's changed so much about that is a lot of the uh, traditional advertisers we used to have, like the McDonald's and the the, the Macy's and some of those, they've gone away. They're not around as much. Now you, you have to, we have to hustle more for the, as they say, the mom and pop stores, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or who's yeah. got a concert in town or, or what the store around the corner that's, you know, a little small clothing store that's owned by, uh, you know, one person or something like that. That's the biggest thing. Yeah. A lot of the big, the big boys and girls don't advertise with us anymore. Um, they go with now, you know, they're all over spending millions of dollars to, to do a, one ad on the Super Bowl as opposed to spending money with black radio. So right. that's one of our biggest challenges we face now. A lot of them don't buy black radio like they used to. Yeah, and we, we've got to do something about that. Um, mm -hmm. We've got a uh, C. Von Parchment is on and he wants to know uh, what's good. My sincere thanks to you, uh, Cameron, for adding Deontay's new <laughs> single, Deliver Me. Yep, they're here in LA. C. Von, how you doing, brother? Okay. Yeah, that's a great song. Um, Deontay Duckett has a great song. They're a local artist and uh, they have a great song out. And uh, yeah, he's a local guy. His daughter is very talented, by the way. She's an actress and she's on TV and she does a lot of stuff. Oh, OK. Well, we'll I think get, her her here, get it and get an interview with her and see yeah. this is what what your app will do. Um, she's mm -hmm. at, at she's at choir rehearsal. <laughs> so mm -hmm. this, this is what an app will do. So it's 
in so many ways, you know, technology is good. And then, you know, but it, it takes you in a whole different, whole different thing. But while you all are, are out here listening, we appreciate everybody for listening. Um, what I need you to do, what I need you to do is hit that like button. I need you to do that. It's well over a hundred people on. I need some likes. I need, I need you to hit that button. It's free. As they say, just like the healing stream is free to all. So I, but I need you to hit that button, hit that button. Uh, Andre, are you still with us? I am, but I'll be honest with you. My phone is about to die. Unfortunately, I'm on my phone and I'm in here and I'm trying to charge it as we speak, but this looks like it ain't working. Oh, because <laughs> we've got a, a question from Donald. Just let's see if we can hurry up and get this in before. Your okay. Phone goes. Okay. Um, I'm a local artist in Los Angeles, and he's a good artist too. Um, he's a music writer who has recorded a few CDs. What's the best way for him to get his music to you and your station? Uh, Donald, we're really easy. I'm down here at, in Inglewood. Uh, you can send it to me uh, here at KJLH. If you go online, kjlhradio.com, you'll find my email on there. Just send me an MP3 of your song. and We'll, we'll be rolling. All right. And this is Donald Weber and he would be sending Donald Weber and God's promise. We play them over here all the time. They're just right. a wonderful, wonderful group. Before right. my phone goes out, I got to say, I love being on with you guys. Please have me on again sometime. We are with the full phone. Okay. With the full phone. Okay. It's about to go out. This Yeah. I'm about to jump. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So you have been, you have been awesome and very informative and, I've enjoyed this. I have. Oh, I God bless you all. I enjoyed it too. Radio. Amen. Amen. We'll get you back. We'll get you back. So okay. while we're making this transition, we want you all to listen to this wonderful song from Darius Brooks and the Tommies all the way from Chicago. Here you go.
right. All right. right. That all was right. from Michael Peters all the way to the end, mm -hmm. all the way to the end, all the way to the end. Um, mm -hmm. Yep. And Roy is like, he's missing that tambourine. <laughs> It's not a tambourine day. Yeah, it right. And that particular song is probably not the best tambourine song. You you want one of these. Mm -hmm. And you get one of them and you can get that yeah, tambourine. And a shoulder oh. rock and a Yeah. <laughs> well, like the woman that shout on the internet. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm going to tell you guys, I have, I, and I have to, to really, I don't know if I want to, I need to repent or, or what. But I've been watching the church funnies. No, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I ever <laughs> on Facebook. Oh yeah. Uh, I, what am I? What am I gonna do with your people? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I mean, man. it is funny. So I mean, you know, we just kind of laugh at ourselves. <laughs> I didn't know y'all was doing all of that in the church. Oh, okay. <laughs> but maybe yeah. I ain't seen it then. Now I see, I see it, and it's like, oh gosh. What do you oh. mean the church fund is? Is it is that a show or no? What what happens is Pastor Jackie, is that they just people send in clips like I you if let's say you know I I go live right and mm -hmm. I'm in church, and somebody happens to do something, and it's like then they they turn it in and it goes viral i don't think i would be able to do it i don't care what i saw i wouldn't i would not do it okay right. like that guy that got that shouted when he was getting married and he yeah just, yeah 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 like that, that. was hilarious that's good stuff yeah that that's was good. hilarious boy was going in he said i ain't said it yet oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah it's that is oh, that, okay. Yeah. Well, that okay. ought to be an inspiration to all. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it ought to be <laughs> an inspiration. Get somewhere and sit down. All right. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, and yes, yes, Michael Peters. Um, I, and I don't know, were you, did anybody, is anybody online that went to board meeting? Um, and I don't know if you went, Michael, or if Donald went uh to board meeting let me know we want to give a shout out to Mashiba webb who is watching with us today holler shout, a shout out to you shout out to you um and we're gonna have to have uh andre russell back on he's a, just yeah. a wealth of knowledge just a wealth yeah of knowledge a wealth yeah of knowledge. so this was the radio election day here be, be going something would be happening with with how technology has flipped with mm -hmm. internet mm -hmm. and so and so forth and downloading and streaming and all, all of that i was i was really curious about how what kind of effect it had had so now i know <laughs> yeah well, well even if uh, people are doing their own uh uh, uh distribution and stuff instead of going through a uh, 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 a distribution company yeah. they're just doing their own stuff they've yeah. got the equipment in their house they're putting it out themselves, so that you know could uh, also affect you know what happens to a radio station. Right, and I I don't advocate folks doing it in their house though. Now I need you to I <laughs> do need you to still go to to a <laughs> trained radio. professional. But I have heard some basement music. Yeah, they got um, the, they got the right equipment in there. You know, just yeah. in their house. That's all. But they know what they're doing. Okay. All right. All right. They know what they're Again, doing. Um, I, I have heard um, it and I've had to say, mm -mm. yes, well, you, you're right. <laughs> What's it? What you got to run with your eyes there? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> oh, my Hello, head. can you hear me? Yes. What? Where's the top of your head, Richard? Can you hear me? Yes. I can't hear you. Oh, okay. Oh. Well, Pastor Jackie, were you saying something? I'm a I'm a log out and come back in. Okay. Were you saying something, Pastor Jack? Uh, if I was, if I, if I didn't get it out, then it's gone. <laughs> but, you were talking about the radio station. I'm, I'm at I'm at a phase where I gotta say it when it comes because it'll come and leave. 
if I don't write it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Michael Peters, yeah, we we understand, honey. Listen, you got to stay for them engagements, honey. <laughs> Yes, yes, you have to stay for the engagements. Um, yeah, Renee, and we love you. We love you. We love you. And we mm-hmm. just love making connections. Mm-hmm. Um, and it, anytime that we can make a connection with someone that will further them, I think that is the reason God put us over here. Mm-hmm. Um, so that we can be a blessing to somebody else. So that we can hook this train up to that train and then they can, that one train can go further. So uh, that's why we're here and uh, we appreciate all of you that are watching again. If you are online, I see so many of you, so many yeah. of you, and we don't even have a fourth of the people that have clicked the like button. <laughs> Somebody, we, we need to have a show. And somebody needs to help me understand, and, and you know, I get it, but help me understand what is it with, I ain't clicking that button. That's the name of the show, Sandy. That's the, that's the name of the show is, I ain't, I ain't clicking, clicking that button. That button. <laughs> and, and I mean, it's not just really even our show. I hear others um, that are out and they have the same complaint you know people come on and but don't click. um they don't and and you can if you're watching us on youtube even if you don't want nobody to know you watching you watching us in secret <laughs> you're being clandestine <laughs> and you are just doing something and it's like i don't want nobody to see what i'm doing go over on youtube we can't tell who liked it so Click, click, like over there. But we need everybody to click like. We and, and explain to them why we want that to happen. You know, as far as the algorithms and stuff the like algorithms that. algorithms are at stake. Um, and, you know, so that we, as a station, you say you like us, you come back and watch our shows on a regular basis. So help us out. And you can help us out. Now, some, we have some people who really help us out in a financial way, and that helps us to get more equipment that helps us. And and I uh, I laugh at, at Nikki who comes in on Tuesday nights, and she said, you know what, every time I come in here, it's something something new. And I'm like, and that's the way it's supposed to be. You're, you should get something we should need to be upgrading all the time so um we have uh programs that we have to buy subscriptions that we have to buy thousands of dollars worth of subscriptions that we need to get so um we appreciate we appreciate the stars we appreciate everything that you do and we try for those of you who want to be recognized that's why we do it once a uh we we put on monthly who has given because we want to actually tell you thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you because you could have done something else that's your hard earned money but you chose to do this and this is your time and we want to thank you really for uh, uh watching this program on a regular basis like you do um and when we get the names uh of the people who have clicked like that just gives us a little something more to pray for. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But see, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned uh, Sandy about subscriptions. I guess a lot of people don't realize that stream yard costs, uh, you know, and other things like that, that allow us to even um, put the show out uh, cost money. Thousands yeah. and thousands of dollars. And yeah. if it was not so everybody would be doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So it's really not about uh, begging per per se, no. but just really kind of educating everybody on uh, what this type of uh, pat- platform uh, requires. And of course, we, everything is, you know, free will or whatever. But just to let you all know that this is, you know, something that it um, does cost. It, yes, it does. 
Uh, it does. It does. And and I mean, you know, and again, if if somebody had to go out and hire these people to put on a radio station like this, it again is thousands of dollars. And it's not just somebody sitting at home saying, I think I was I is gonna go online <laughs> right now. Let me go live. It's not, it's that's not it. So um, we appreciate you uh, for for all that you do and just the support that you show up. You keep showing yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> that part. Yeah. That part. Yeah. I mean, you know, I pray for each and every one of you um, because of, of what you do. And it's just so phenomenal. So phenomenal. Um, and uh, which is the effort, the many efforts that are put forth to uh bring forth a, a show of excellence yeah, yeah. and diversity, yes, yes, it may be a gospel uh show primarily, but not just. Mm -hmm. Uh, it is our endeavor, and I appreciate the vision that you have, uh, uh Sandy, in that we, we try to expose our listeners. And I hope our listeners can appreciate we try to expose you to more than just music because life right. is more than just mm -hmm. gospel music. So it, it has been an awesome experience. Uh, today's show, the gentleman, I mean, just getting some understanding about a, a radio station and what, what it takes and, yeah. and all of that. And, and we know, need Pastor to know. Jackie, it's this comment and, um, uh, Sister Willie May said, yes, bring him back. I never heard of him until today. See, You know, how many times do we get that on every show? Yeah. 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 People yeah. always say, I, you know what? I didn't even know that it, they existed or people were doing that. I, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. So we try. To see, it's like Teresa said, but back in the back mm -hmm. in the day, it was the top 10, top 20. That's all you heard. Mm -hmm. That's all you heard. Right. And right. there was much more music and in terms of even uh, topics of discussion, they kind of stayed in the same avenue all the time. Yeah. Uh, we have course. said some very sensitive subjects. Yeah. And yeah. it has been done very diplomatically and, yeah. uh, and, and tasteful uh, where you can, you, you, you want to listen and hmm, I want to hear that show again. I want to. I want that person to come back to give me some more information because this is a fact. The Bible says that people perish the lack for of lack of not. There's so much that you don't know, and so much you could know. Mm. Yep. And this and, is one of the venues. <laughs> right, right. And you can get it right here. You and can Renee, get it right I don't here. know if you were on earlier when. Um, I show today is Renee Crutchfield Day. So <laughs> it, it has really turned into Renee Crutchfield Day. It didn't start out that way, but <laughs> I saw fit to turn it into Renee Crutchfield Day. And we sincerely hope that something uh, will come out of it. Well, we know it will. Um, we know it will, oh, things will work out for everybody that listens because you are doing it as, uh, as a labor of love. Um, and I'm going to give my announcements, uh, let's see. Announcements? Yeah. Yeah. We've got announcements. Uh, Roseville said, I love our show. And I love that y'all call it our show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I lo uh, that part I love. Yeah. You know, I, I'll see Roxy. She'll say, you know, I, I just love our show. And I'm like, <laughs> this, right? It's our show. It's our show. So yeah, thank you everybody, everybody. And yes, it's it's our show. But by way of announcements, we want to again uh talk about the twin and uh her home going service. If you want to be a part of the musical, if you want to be a part of the mass choir rehearsal is Thursday, and this is for uh 
uh, Mother Darlene Harris, who was a soprano in the Gospel mm -hmm. Music Workshop of America, the Detroit chapter. So the information is right there on the screen, March 7th, 6 o'clock, Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church. And then the homegoing service, now there will be a viewing on Friday um, at the Swanson's Funeral Home on Six Mile. And then on Saturday, they're going to have the homegoing services at 10 and 11. And it's going to be at Jerusalem Missionary Baptist Church where they served for so many years on Strong Street in Detroit. And we want to see everybody, everybody, please come out and support Sister Arlene Cousins. Um, they were, if, if anybody knows them, they were twins that still dressed alike. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> right. Wow. They still dressed alike. They lived together. Um, so this is difficult. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so if, you know, for those of you who are across the miles, just keep them in your prayers. Mm -hmm. Keep keep yeah. that whole family in your prayers. I went by and sat with her um, on Sunday mm -hmm. a couple hours and, mm -hmm. and you know, God is good. Mm -hmm. God is good. And he's bringing her peace about this situation. Mm -hmm. Also, by way of announcements, we want to talk about uh, Mother Hattie B. Humphrey, March 17th. You want to be there for her 96th birthday celebration. So mm. uh, going out uh, is, as they say, free admission. Uh, come on out and, and celebrate with uh, the missionary, Detroit's missionary. <laughs> now that's, now you talking about a whole era. Now that's some history right there. Yeah. Yes, How old is she going to be? 96. 96 and she's still dancing. wearing heels and dancing she's still <laughs> and i don't mean you know like just right no she dance. Dance. no she is still dancing 102 miles an hour 102 on one leg <laughs> yep she yep. kicks that foot oh, and we don't want to forget uh dr jessica from yesterday and her event is going to be the weekend of april 20th um and you go to the colony club but she says she's only got 100 tickets so you need to be one of those lucky 100 women or men to come and uh partake in this event and then sunday i believe they're going to be a third new hope uh for that next program so mm -hmm. and that one she she's just requesting that uh the women wear white that's all and just come let's flood out third new hope amen uh, amen. amen all right any uh any announcements all right yes. well we i will say this my my prayers go to uh lady arlene mother arlene uh I'll, I'm going to, I hate, I'm going to miss the home going and all. I'll be, I leave for Texas in the morning, part of my ordination um, situation. So I'll be in Texas until Saturday. So, uh, yeah. but my love and prayers will be with her and the family and, and the choir, because the choir is, is hurting. Because yeah. I'm hurting, so I know the choir is hurting. Right. And and I am praying for and for the family and I'm praying for the choir. I, too, have I had a ticket that was purchased a while back and I was hoping when they planned the service that they did not say it was this weekend. Um, and this weekend, I won't be back home until Sunday. See, so. Um, we're praying for the family. We love everybody. Uh, thank you, Richard, for all you do. Thank you so much, Teresa. And thank you so much, Pastor Jackie. And each and every one of you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And also, uh, start getting ready because we're going to be voting for the Stellar Awards. Uh, Mother Willie Mae just brought it back up, but we're going to be voting for the Stellar Awards at the end, toward the end of this month. So it's back around again. So uh, we'll give you more information about that. But we need yeah, you, 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 and you. And I want you to do better than clicking that than you do with clicking that like button. <laughs> I know you can. I love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Night, 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 night. 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 Elder Rudolph Stanfield.
you for listening to The Sandy Rose Show with your host, Sandy Rose. If you have enjoyed this broadcast, won't you consider liking and sharing this with a friend or family member? We'd love for you to share it on your Facebook page. Thank you for tuning to WVTC Radio Detroit. Remember to like and share this broadcast with a friend. We are WVTC, winning victory through Christ. Go to your Apple or Google Play Store and download the WVTC Gospel Radio app today. You can also say, Alexa, play WVTC Radio Skills. Would you like to play WVTC Radio Network? Absolutely. Download it today. This is Shirley Smith from Journey Music Studios. And when I'm not teaching, I'm listening and watching WVTC Detroit. You're listening to WVTC, Gospel Radio Detroit, and we're flowing in the spirit.